So, when I first got the Masala, uh, <laughs> my original intention was actually painted metallic, originally. But now I've uh, I've uh, went through several kits of metallic. I want to take a pretty much a little bit of a break. And I can pretty much uh, understand you guys are probably having a sigh of relief. I like metallic. What can I say? But for now, I'm going to do something slightly off and different with this guy. Um, for starters, with the lavender or the purplish light blue you could say the only thing I got is this violet but this violet which is already worn out will probably not be a good choice so I'll put this to the side I wanted to change up the color a bit and I'm thinking of a, a different type of shade of blue I have a lot of the Mr. Colors metallic blue which of course I want to avoid so that's put to the side I do have a navy blue, which I am trying to find. It's somewhere around here. Here it is. And this one, navy blue. But for those of you who probably don't remember, I used this navy blue on a previous kit, and I wasn't too fond of it. Um, I'm trying to remember which one. I think I used it for some of the trim parts for some other Master Grade kit, which, quite frankly, is not within visual range. No, I was, I, you know, at first I thought it was the uh, um, the Aegis or the whatever kit, but all right, never mind about that. So. I may have to test out this navy blue, and most likely I'll probably end up using it for the darker trims, since it's so dark. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't give me the color that I'm looking for. Almost a grayish color, but maybe it needs to be mixed properly. I'll test this out and see how it works. So we have this one to the side, and we can use this for the alternate for this color. As for the remaining lighter blue, I have a choice. I'm thinking of either using sky blue, and for those of you who don't remember, I actually used this sky blue on my um, Master Grade Double O riser, and I have plenty of it. And um, another another paint that I could probably use is an, um, let's see here. Well. When I was looking at this kit, I kind of liked how, you know, we all saw the um, Stein was. And I was thinking maybe of using NATO Black. Now, why would I want to use NATO Black? Well, quite simply, I, I'm thinking of doing the same thing what I did with the Stein with the color, with that, that um, camo pattern. Because there's so much surface detail on this kit that I think it would be great if I painted the NATO black on all these parts and then take the actual um, tape, cover it up in specific areas, and then repaint it with this. And then peel it off, and then we have light blue with some black um, square uh, markings on it. So I'm thinking of putting on the legs. And of course, on the, th on the back thrusters is definitely necessary for that. The inside of this, this is one thing that I'm kind of a bit uh, curious. There's a lot of detailed uh, paint here, a lot of detailed things. So I'm thinking of spray painting that all black. Probably use the Alcad black. And then spray painting it. Um, probably put tape inside the edges of the thruster, or edges of this then spray painting it the chrome. Clearly chrome is necessary for like thruster for a thruster look to it. So that one is an idea that I want to try. So that's an idea for this. Um, the red I have I'm thinking of using a darker darker color of red 
Mm, where is that red that I used a while back? Oh, here it is. Actually, no, this is not darker red. This is a metallic red. I think a metallic red would probably look good on this, especially around there and the umbilicals. And then the rear of the thrusters. So yeah, that should be fine. Maybe metallic a little metallic doesn't hurt. So don't don't get your all well, don't all you guys get your pennies in a bunch. Now there's a yellow and red trim, and the yellow trim is located in the tips of the th over here, here, and here. So that's easy to mask and spray paint. On top of here, so it's on both sides. And then, of course, here by the by what I consider the uh, the hawk face, there's a, there's pink, and thankfully I have pink. Finally, got a choice, to, a chance to use this guy. So I think I have all the colors here. This for this, that for that. There's a gray color. What is the gray color? Oh, the um, the hands. Is that white? No, oh, the hands and the feet. So I mean the claws, the hands, the tip of the foot, and the knees. Some some uh, some joints. Uh, let's see what can I if I have a good gray here. Yeah, medium gray should be su sufficient enough. All right. So there you have it. There's all the paints I'm going to be using for this kit. Give it a little bit of. This shouldn't take that long, considering this is acrylic paint. It's, um, well, I have one, two, three, four acrylic paints and a two of these, plus the gloss and the chrome. There we go. That's for the detail in the back. All right. Let's now begin building high-grade masala. Okay. Here is the masala 144 scale already built on display as you can see here on my desk, my workbench. I decided to build it now and review what I have to do to make to paint this kit the way I want it. Um, a lot of sanding had to be done here along the edges of the um, flight pack here at the nubs here getting it down even the chest area here was a bit of chore up here as well. A little bit up here. Clearly along the sides of this. Um, not too much on the leg except for the, the black trim part here. Uh, I'm sorry, the purplish. Yeah, the dark purplish trim part there. Um, behind here, I had a lot of trouble with this guy because I didn't realize, at first I, I assembled the part together without the red part going in. Then I didn't, I thought that you can actually slide it in once this two were together. No, you have to actually put them inside first and then close it up. So I did a lot of work on, on sanding it down and then when I had to remove it, it damaged it. So I have to, I closed it up, glued it, then I got to re-sand it down so it's nice and flush. Uh, I'm not going to have any trouble with the legs except for the in this part here which I need to clean up the little nub there. There's nubs around the thrusters that needs to be cleaned up. Um, I glued the um, the little um, hawk um, the little spikes down here because they were susceptible to coming off easily. I could have easily gl glued the whole system up here of the head but I need access to it so that way I can paint that little red dot there or pink dot here for the mono eye. Um, it is a very very nice looking design. <laughs> it really brings back memory of the one that I had, uh, the older version of this. And uh, it's, I'm surprising it's it's nice and stable. It co even though it comes with the stand, the stand will probably be used specifically for the um, mobile armor. Uh, mobile armor mode. However, stay up there for a second. However, in order for me to present it at the show, I don't want to transform it and then do more damage, uh, to say the least. 
So I most likely it'll be kept into this position. Probably we'll have the um, a f the fist here with the beam saber, uh, the beam uh, sabers on both hands. Might probably keep this one here and keep that hand open, or maybe keep that hand open and then remove this so I can put the three claws, and then have one of these missile pods open, exposing the missiles. So that is pretty much my idea. Now I'm going to begin carefully. Move uh, carefully and slowly taking apart this kit again so I can uh, I have to work on removing this part here and these the take apart the leg so I can remove these this part also it pretty much have to remove a lot of things especially this because I want um, at first I thought maybe I can paint it while it's together but then I realized that's going to be a lot of double work because then I have to cover this and cover that and then redo it again so certain parts I think I can get away with, certain parts I cannot. I can remove the um, the red umbilicals, that's easy to do, and the red trim on the uh, forearm. Um, I can remove this, but I don't think I can take this apart again because then I can't access the missiles. Um, but I can probably um, jury rig something where I can spray paint the whole thing then cover it up so I can spray paint the red. This definitely has to be removed like I mentioned before. So is the feet and the claws. The thrusters, I can easily pop out because it's. I didn't glue them. I just need to grab them. One. Oh, there we go. Here's one coming out now. Because uh, I and I gotta sand down the edges so that way I can paint the inside um, silver and then the. Uh, I'm sorry, the outside silver and the inside red. And. Um, this whole thing, of course, needs to be repainted as well as what I mentioned before. The f the um, the actual um, these parts here is e can easily come out, and they can be glued on. I don't want to glue them now. I want to do it after I finish painting the whole thing. And this one, of course, after I finish sanding and painting it, then I'm going to cover up the entire edges. So that way I can paint the red. Also remove these. So that is the idea. Simple, right? Shouldn't take that much time. As long as I do it correctly and uh, patiently. Right now I'm going to um, wipe, out all, wipe down all the uh, sanded uh, parts so I can start priming it. And then begin painting it.